Welcome to another Encore edition of Chat Day Saturday. My name is Mark Bosnich, and as I promised on the first weekend of this show, uh, we will be having special guests every now and then. And today's special guest is a very well-known figure to Australian fans and a very well-known figure to myself. Serial winner, serial goal scorer, the one, the only, Dwight York. Now, part one will be today from 6.15 on Fox Sports News, and part two will be on tomorrow night. Sit back and enjoy. As is the style of this show, we focus in on three main subjects. So the first subject I wanted to focus in on is the 1995-96 season at Aston Villa. You hit 25 goals in all competitions. Uh, we won the League Cup, uh, got to the semi-finals of the FA Cup, fourth in the league. And it was a season that you really, you have to say, broke through in a massive way. Tell us about your memories of that season. And also tell us about the memories I want to have one game, which was the semi-final against Arsenal, when we were 2-0 down and you scored two goals to make it 2-2. Yeah, well, I think you, you pretty know uh, the score yourself, Buzzy, but for your audience out there that probably doesn't really know uh, what we've been through. I mean, I've been obviously been at Villa for um, literally 10 years over my playing career. Um, so there was a, a progressive um, <clears throat> time in my career that I obviously uh, hadn't really featured as regular as I would like to. I was like on the, the benches. Um, coming off as a subs occasionally used. And if you recall, back in those days, you only have, what, three or four substitutes, not like today, where you have eight or ten people on the bench at the time. So it was very difficult um, back in those days. But, yeah, I I've learned the trade. I've had some good senior players ahead of me. Um, I was, you know, developing nicely. I had some very interesting manager, including Ron Atkinson at the time. So I was learning my trade. Um, very well with, with the people in and around me. I was at the right club, I think, at the time. Um, so, yeah, so when, when it gets to the 95 96 season, as you recall, um, I'm just becoming the guy at the club, if you know what I mean, like the, mm -hmm. the, 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 one of the top guy at the club. I uh, felt very confident in my ability. I felt like I've done all my, uh, what you call my educational in, in football. Uh, and it was time for me to explore on, on the on, on the English league. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that year in 95, 96 is when, as you said, uh, I've really taken the, 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 the bull by the scruff of the neck and sort of start stamping my authority in games and, and start producing the goods on a regular basis. So, um, yeah, I take a lot of credit for it, but there was a lot of players in and around me that made it happen as well. So I, I would, you know, so I was very fortunate to play in a good system that really suits, suits, suits me as an individual to sort of break out even further. And on that, and like I said, I just want to take you back to that one game. Uh, we won the League Cup. We beat Leeds 3-0 at Wembley. But in the semi-final, uh, we, pl we played Arsenal. And it was a two-legged game, for those who don't know, here in Australia. And like I said, in the end, we went through on away goals. But the important away goals were scored by you. We were 2-0 down to two goals from Dennis Bergkamp. Did you feel at that stage when we were 2-0 down that that's it, we're gone? Well, to be quite honest, you know, back in 95, 96, Arsenal probably was one of the toughest teams to play against. The, the, the system and the players that they had at the disposal, I think everyone has us as the underdog. And, you know, going to Highbury back in the days in, in such confined uh, stadium, you know, really up on you. You know, you need, you know, big personality to, to turn up to get anything from that Arsenal, the back four of Adams and Bold and, you know, Seaman and Gold and Burkham people and people like Ian Wright, you know, Patrick Vieira, you, you know, you name all those players, they were all there. Um, so it was a, a tough ask on the night. And of course, you know, two nil down against Arsenal is never an easy place at Highbury. But it was a belief we felt that we, we kept in the game, even at 2-0. We feel like we were creating chances. Savo was having one and two chances, unfortunately. He didn't really put it away. And as the game progressed, you know, they probably get a little complacency because they thought, uh, you know, they have done enough. But we had other ideas back then. Certainly I did as a, a player. And these were the stages that you was really, you know, you relishing as a player. You want to turn up and perform on the big stage, and this was one of those uh, situations. And, and of course, I was very fortunate to score two goals, but two goals away at Arsenal after being 2-0 down, it's always gonna be a challenging uh, prospect for us. 
uh, but that really played back into our hands. And of course, those two two goals with the second leg to come at Villa Park was always going to be a tough ask for them. So we knew that what we had to do. But um, yeah, that was a defined moment, certainly in my playing career and in terms of my elevation as a player. Um, especially the team like Arsenal back in the days was a really tough ask. But um, yeah, you 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 yourself made some great save for us, <laughs> kept us in the game when we, when we needed as uh, a big moment because two 0 it doesn't seem like a lot, but you know you kept us. It could have probably been more on the night as you as you know. Um, but everyone played a part, and of course, uh, you know me getting the, the two goals really um, put us back and give us that extra belief knowing that they had to come back at Villa Park. Well, thank you very much for that. I'm getting a bit embarrassed, as you you'd probably uh, wouldn't understand because that I'm, I'm live on camera, so I get a bit embarrassed and red and that, but thank you very much. Now, we'll zero in on, on the second subject, uh, Manchester United. And you just mentioned, funny enough, you know, it's easy uh, saying it. And uh, you went to Manchester United in 98, 1998, I remember it for £12.6 million, which was a record signing at that time. And I always remember saying to you, and I actually said it to Sir Alex Ferguson at the time, uh, this is the final piece of the jigsaw. I believe Manchester United with Dwight can win the European Champions League. And I always remember Sir Alex saying back to me, well, it's all right for you to say it. He's got to go and do it. Uh, you did go and do it and done it in style. But what was the pressure like then, Dwight, you know, with that price tag, with the fact that they'd come off a season where they hadn't won any trophies and so much was expected and put upon your shoulders? Well, I think that, you know, a lot of people... Uh, don't know me that well as an individual. I think you had a very close idea. We were best buddies for a number of years and you know, we were very close in contact and you know what type of individual I was. I was very, I won't say cocky because I'm not that type, but I was very confident in my ability and you know, football is something that I grew up with and, and know it extremely well. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know the score. You were there at the time. Uh, I really wanted to make that move I felt that, you know, I've given, you know, 10 years of my time at, at Villa. I felt like I needed a, a, a bigger stage, so to speak. Not that Villa wasn't a big club, because they are. Um, I felt that I needed this new challenge. Um, I could have easily stayed at Aston Villa, as you know. Uh, more money was offered at the time for me to stay. Uh, back in the days, what you call a testimonial, which was a big deal that was also on, on the table. But I didn't, I wasn't after the money. I was after winning trophies. And I felt my chances um, going to United, knowing what they, they're capable of doing and what they have done over the years was the club for me to go to. Um, the price tag didn't worry me one bit. Um, yes, it was a big, the, the media made a big deal out of it. Uh, I wasn't fair of the, the, the price tag. I knew that I was going into a system or to play alongside very good players. I can only enhance me as a player to get better. And, and and the moment I walked through that door, I realized that this club was for me. I, I embraced it. I didn't get you know too overwhelmed by it. I know that, that it was a challenge. Um, I don't like the word pressure um, because for me, pressure is when you can't afford something for your kids and you can't pay your mortgage. I was playing a sport that I was getting paid uh, a lot of money to do. And I, I loved doing what I was doing. So that's how I see it. And I didn't look at the history too much of Man United. I, I know that it, it was a big club and they wanted to win European Cups and that kind of stuff. That was, you know, football basis. And that played right into my hands. So I just went in there with an open arms, like if I was still at Villa, but just with better quality players in and around me. And so I embraced it from the day I walked in at that, that football club. I love every minute of it. And, uh, you know, I'm a, a very bubbly person. I brought something totally different to the dressing room that they're not used to. Um, I was very, uh, you know, being me coming in, being all chirpy to laugh about every situation that was going and where some people was a little bit serious in that dressing room. Um, but the, it, it seems to be, you know, it seems to have worked out well for me because it needed something uh, different in the dressing room and my playing style suits all these other guys in and around there. So it was, it was very easy. And the quality that I was walking into, you know, in the likes of Beckham and, and Scholes and Roy Keane and Andy Cole and, yeah, you know, yeah, Stamp and Schmeichel, you know the crew. Hmm. 
it, football football was just such a, a great pleasure. Now I expected to win something, um, certainly in my first year, but what I didn't plan for or anyone, as a matter of fact, was to win the treble, something that uh, no other club has been able to do. Um, it's it's probably not probably the, the most historical moment in the history of Manchester United Football Club. And to be part of that, um, to contribute to, you know, a small part of that squad um, was just, uh, I don't think word could actually describe how I felt at that particular moment, but um, all the hard work, all the dedication, all the sacrifice that you have made over the years, make it worthwhile when, you know, one of these, you know, obviously the historical moment in Manchester yeah. history pays off like it did. Um, Listen, it, there's not a word buzzer. It's just amazing. It was uh, fantastic. It was uh, everything that you dream of as a player and more. Hmm. Um, it all happened in one season over a period of, you know, 10 to 12 days that everything seems to really sunk in after those uh, victories. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, amazing just to be part of that. And as I said, probably the most historical moment in the history of Manchester United Football Club. So something that the club will always be talked of, talked about um, and to, to be mentioned in it and the season that I had from an individual point of view, um, scoring 29 goals, you know, assists 20, 23. I think that's um, that, that was very telling on, on my part. But, you know, having taken all, a lot of credit for it, I still have to reach out to all my teammates in terms of what they have done and how they contributed to, uh, to the team as well. Everyone played a part when it needed to. And that was important, you know, in terms of our success as a team. Um, and so, yeah, uh, to be part of that, that was just enormous and great. And uh, as I said, you can look back and reflect and that will always be there. That's something that mm. no other person could take away from you. It's something that, you know, yourself as an individual, your family, you know, my son would be able to look back and think, right, you know, your dad has been part of such a historical moment, so which is great. And there were so many pivotal games during that season. And as is the style on this show, I'm going to focus in on one of those games because it was one of those games I remember you always told me, Bozzy, you always said, like, you know, I've always, you know, had great atmospheres where I've played, but there was one particular day at Old Trafford in late January 1999 FA Cup fourth round, playing against the greatest rivals of Manchester United, Liverpool. Michael Owen scores in the, I think it was about the second or third minute. And all of a sudden, there's 88th minute, two minutes to go. And talk us through what happened next, because that was a sign of things to come, these late comebacks, wasn't it? Yeah, and I think that's been our trademark. But even before my time, they always seem to have scored in the dying stage of the game. So, you know, we felt... And the one thing you know now, uh, yourself playing under Swalex, you know, um, the game is never over until the fat lady sing, as they say back in England. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is, it is what, it is what Man United is made of. And um, yeah, even that night, um, again, it was my first experience of playing in, in such a, a derby, two respected uh, football team, I get the two biggest club in, in England coming head to head in the manner that it is, it was a, uh, I think it was a, yeah, June, June the week, you know, I, I forget, I can't even recall the actual date, as you said, the fourth, the fourth round was it, yeah. Sunday, um, it was late January on a Sunday. Sunday. Right, there you go. So, mm. again, that's, um, you know, you, you, you look forward to these games as a player and, and so when you in the moment, uh, you just focus in and of course we were trailing to that early goal from Michael Owen, as you said, um, but we felt that we, you know, we were pressuring them and we were all over them, but for some reason we couldn't get it in. And it was, you know, that time where you think, yes, yeah, something is going to happen, two minutes remaining. And of course I got that equalizer um, uh, to really send the game, maybe even to, not, not meant to extra time, but to a replay, I, I assume, back in the days. And then so when we scored, I run over to, uh, to the supporters end and that moment, the joy and the feel and the atmosphere, I I've never experienced it. You know, I've played Champions League games, the big nights, of, the huge nights at uh, Old Trafford, but 
that day, that particular goal, and it wasn't a classic by any means. <laughs> it was actually a tap in. But <laughs> you know, the, the the actual celebration of it, um, the, the the energy that comes from the crowd, the energy that you know translate through players to player, the, the joy, the the embracement on on that particular day was like no other. I have never experienced it. And you, know, you can sense from that moment, um, we were going to do something again to this this Liverpool team. And they got hit by a brick wall major, like, you know, seriously. And within another minute, uh, Scozzi ended up scoring the goal. And, and I think that's when it really sunk in and thought, wow, this is just the best, the best mm. feeling. This is where we're going to kickstart. And as you know, we went unbeaten for a very, very long time in that season from there on in. But that, that was for me, uh, in terms of atmosphere, in terms of electricity, in terms of what it meant to the fans and, and everybody else in that stadium, if you want a Liverpool fan, um, it, was, it was just sensational. And, and, and that's something, you know, there are moments in your career that you will always remember. That is one of the moments because of the, the rivalry between those two clubs. It was just, as I said, amazing. 